Welcome to Make Life Fun. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, founder of Backroads Coaching, where we pave our own path to self-acceptance. Think of me as your self-love bestie, here to guide you, support you as you let go, rewrite the thoughts and beliefs that are blocking you from loving yourself and living your best life. This season, we are talking business, pleasure, love, money, and of course, all things motherhood. This is a sponsored episode by Regila Beauty. As women, our skincare needs are constantly evolving and changing. So it can get a little confusing when we need a new item to fit into our existing skincare routine to tackle new issues. Regila Beauty has a wide variety of items that are built to fit into your routine, whether you have youthful skin, mature skin, you're expecting, or you're even a new mama. If I told you that you could enjoy these benefits without the inconvenience or expense of changing your current skincare routine, but just by adding something wonderful and affordable to it. Skin that looks and feels more even-toned, firmer, hydrated, radiant, smoother, smaller pores. Well, Regila Beauty has the Hydrating Serum, and it is that something wonderful that I'm speaking of. It is perfect for busy moms at any stage of motherhood, whether you're trying to conceive, currently pregnant, nursing, or preparing for an empty nest. Our serum is the clean beauty, fuss-free add-in you've been looking for. It's formulated to be non-irritating for even the most sensitive skin. It's full of beautifying botanicals featuring hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and vitamin C, the ultimate anti-aging trifecta. It sinks right into your skin effortlessly between your current toner, moisturizer, without feeling greasy or sticky. It's unscented and also free of toxic ingredients that could harm your health. Get it today by visiting Regila's Amazon shop at amazon.com slash Regila, R-E-J-A-L-L-A, or click the link in the description box now. Welcome listeners, family, friends to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so glad you're here. Today I have a treat for you. I have Brittany Clarkson on the podcast. Welcome, Brittany. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, Brittany, tell us a little bit about yourself. What is it that you're passionate about right now? What is lighting you up? All right. I am Brittany Clarkson, born and raised in the Pacific Northwest, and I am the mom to three boys. I often like to call them rowdy rambunctious, but I'm trying to kind of put a distance between labeling them (laughs) in hopes that I can embrace the calm moments. Well, yes, life with three boys can be quite crazy. They are two, four, and six, so it gets intense, but I love it. I am determined to love almost every single minute of it. I struggled for a long time with depression and anxiety, and I let that steal a lot of the early years of motherhood from me and enjoying them. And I just kept getting, finding myself in this cycle of, you know, everything's fine and then nothing is fine. Mm. And I knew I had to get out of that. And it was in realizing all of the tools and knowledge that I had that I wasn't using. Once I started applying that into my every day, it really started putting joy into every day, Mm. helping me to find things to be grateful for. And once I had that, and I just reached this new level of like, oh my gosh, life doesn't have to suck most of the time. And it's up to me that I'm like, I need to share this. Oh and my so, gosh. Yes. yeah, yeah. I was like, I, it's just so rude to keep that to myself. I can't not just like shout it from the rooftop. And so that's how like my business of meant to bloom was born out of it. My podcast meant to bloom and my happy mom brain mission to share it with everyone. Hey, and thank you for coming here and sharing it with my people today of yes. your, how you came to find this meant to bloom. Is it this journey that you just took us through right now of like, how did you start to open up? How did you start to love yourself essentially? Cause it sounds like you just loved yourself back to life. Oh, really? Yes. So much of like the depression anxiety was so rooted in just feeling like I'm not enough, not seeing who I really am. I was believing all of those lies that we like to tell ourselves. And like, I was obsessing over them, just ruminating and thinking again and again, you know, one little thing would go wrong. And my mindset was like, so in the trash can Mm. (laughs) and I would take one little thing going wrong and make my whole life about that Mm. and make it mean something about me. Oh, and it like, it seeped into every area of my life, like destroying my marriage, even though there was nothing wrong in my marriage. Mm. Like my husband loves me, but if he was tired. I would take that and be like, it's my fault that you're not in a good mood because I'm not good enough. I'm not doing everything in the house. Dinner was bland, but he's going to leave me. 
And anytime he would catch me in these like just spiraling out of control, he's like, I don't even understand what you're talking about. Mm. Dinner was fine. The house isn't a wreck. Like, yeah, there's some dirty dishes. It's fine though. Like, I love you so much Mm. and I don't understand why you think I'm going to leave you for this. Mm. Everything would be the end of the world for me because my mindset would just take it and like spiral down the toilet and convince myself that it's my fault that everything sucks, Mm -hmm. even though everything did not suck. And that's where our focus goes, right? Where our focus goes is where we're going to enhance, right? Even if we don't see it, even if it's not real, our mind is going to pick it up and it's going to run with it, like you said. And so how Mm -hmm. did you start to notice that that is what was happening? I had been in and out of therapy with different like therapists and I'd been on this journey for years but it just kept being that cycle where it's like every time things got really bad, I'd realize, oh, they're really bad because I'm letting myself have these thoughts. I'm not Mm -hmm. talking to myself nicely. I'm just like the biggest jerk in the world to me, Mm -hmm. tearing myself down for every mistake. And then I'd get better. And then I lose that. I'd stop the good habits Mm -hmm. and go right back down. It came to this one day in June of 2020, Mm -hmm. like the world was shut down. Everything was upside down. I'd already been isolating since November (laughs) because I had a baby due in February. So I was already trying to avoid getting sick by the time my baby's six weeks old. And I'm like, I'm ready to go out in the world, COVID. So I was like, okay, cool. I've been home for like six months with my three kids and I have not been taking care of myself at all. And I've been believing that everything I did wrong, staring at these same walls in my house, believing that everything I didn't finish is my fault and means something about me. I was just so filled with negative talk and I was trying to like decide what to make for dinner. And I got Mm. so stressed that like the moment my husband came in the door, I kissed everyone in the house and like went outside and I went down to the woods in our backyard and it was raining. I remember, and I was just walking and I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm never going back in there. I don't know if I'm running away or if I'm ending my life. And I just like spiraled and got to a point where like, no, I'm pretty sure I'm going to end it. I'm, I can't keep doing this. And it was there when I like surrendered everything that just like everything opened up. I saw this dead Stellar's J as I'm walking through the woods because I was pretty sure I was going to like end things. And then I see a dead Stellar's J, which is my favorite bird. And it's like just disgusting. It's dead. It's filled with maggots. And I'm like, oh, death is not pretty. I don't want that. That's not for me right now. (laughs) It just opened my eyes. I'm like, anyways, if I did, who would watch my kids? As much as I thought that I was failing at things, I knew that no one could take my place. No one could love my kids more than I could. No one knows them like I do. Like my kids have specific needs. Like my husband would be, my husband doesn't even know which clothes belong to which kid. He has lost without me taking care of those parts of my kid's childhood. Like he works so many hours a day. Like he misses what size shoes the kids are wearing. And that's fine. (laughs) Like he does his job, comes home and plays with them. He doesn't have to know all those specifics that I know, but I'm like, no one knows those. He'd be lost without me. I can't abandon them. I can't do that to them. I'm like, but if I'm going to stay here, I can't keep staying in this cycle. Something has to change. And that's when like, I say that I was rebaptized because it was raining on me at that moment. And I'd been baptized like as a 12 year old in a public pool. And I was like, I didn't feel anything then. There was no like, there was no enlightenment happening in that first baptism. But this one here where I'm in the woods getting rained on, just the whole world opened up. And I'm like, I know everything I'm supposed to be doing. I know how to not be just a depressed mess all the time. And it starts with me noticing when the negative thoughts come in and countering them saying like, you're not, you're not me. That's not my thought. That's not truth. I am enough. I know I am. Look at all these things I have done. Just because something went wrong doesn't mean that my life is trash. And I just, I had that realization. I came out of it and I just started applying everything I knew I was supposed to be doing and actually doing it every single day, making it a priority, putting it in my planner that I'm going to be grateful for something today. I'm going to talk myself up with affirmations today. Like I'm going to have an intention in my life because my life has purpose. I'm not just going day to day doing the housework and, you know, I'm not just here to keep things organized and clean and to cook. I'm here to make an impact. I'm here to influence my children's lives. I'm here to love them and to guide them in life. And I can't do that if I'm not taking care of myself, if I'm not paying attention to what I'm thinking and like where I'm allowing myself to go. Wow. What a journey that you've been on. (laughs) And thank you for coming here and sharing that with us and being so open and so vulnerable. Yeah. I really, I really feel that in my spirit that this message of you telling us this 
journey that you took is going to help so many people because there's so many moms out there that are thinking that exact same thought. I am failing. I am not Mm -hmm. doing it right. Like they're, I'm not the right person for this job. And then it gets to the point where, like you said, you're just, you're too far gone. And so by telling your story and telling this message to people and moms, especially, we can help them before it gets that way. And the thing that really stuck out for me that you said is, I know that I'm enough. I know that I'm enough. And so how did you anchor that in your soul for it to be so like resonating when you say it now? Because I feel that. I really just got grounded in exploring it more. I turned to journaling a lot because otherwise I'll think a thought and it'll be gone. Mm -hmm. If I journal it, I'm writing it down. I can look back on it later. I can take that thought and let it grow bigger and bigger Mm -hmm. by rereading the same sentence. And I don't just lose it. But I would make like strengths lists. Mm -hmm. What am I already good at? What have I already done? And focus on that goodness. And a lot of it in realizing I'm enough was just beating the fact that the thought I'm not enough kept coming back in so many different Mm -hmm. ways. And realizing how irrational a lot of the thoughts were saying that like, I'm not a good enough wife because dinner didn't taste that great. Like he didn't marry me for my cooking. (laughs) I cook a whole lot better today than the day he met me. Yes. Like like I haven't gotten worse at cooking. He knew what he was getting into. So you have like a conversation, like an internal conversation with Mm -hmm. yourself that you are saying to yourself, like, this is not the fault. This is not true. This is false because I know to be true this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And that tends to really like anchor that in for you and make it more real because now you know that you're, you're the voice, like you're the more powerful one. You're the one in charge, right? That's what it Mm -hmm. sounds like when you're speaking, which is so powerful and so impactful. And uh, yeah, so those tools that you gave us definitely are something for all of us to try on. And we start like for me, the journaling is a big one. So whenever I'm doing really good, I'm a journal queen. <laughs> the moment things start going not my way, I'm like, okay, I won't, I don't really want to journal about it. And so I don't. So mm. how do you make it a priority for you to be so consistent? Cause you said like, these are daily habits and they are so consistent. Yeah. I'm actually the opposite with journaling. When things are going well, I don't practice things like that. It's when things get low and I'm like, I need to process this. I need to get these emotions out. I think that stems back to like being a teenager and being like moody and going off to my room and like writing poetry and like (laughs) all of that. But how I really started putting it into action every day at that moment was putting it in my daily planners. I would go through and I would just add like, okay, I need to like practice gratitude during this Mm -hmm. section and just like list it out. I need to be looking at it instead of looking at all the things that I'm convinced I need to do because- What's priority over a 30 something long to-do list is being happy where I am, being okay with who I am. Thank you, sweetheart. You're so sweet, baby. Thank you. You can go now. I love you. Oh, did you just get a flower? Yeah, my little guy just brought me a flower from outside. Oh, that's so sweet. Is he gets it from his brothers. Oh, I love that so much. That just melts my heart. Can you go play with Dash, please? He's so interested in what I have set up right now. So, yeah, so you're talking about contentment, being content Mm -hmm. with where you are right now. And I think that's such a powerful message of finding the joy in everyday life, finding the good in everyday life and not having that belief that I'll be happy when this happens. Because I think for a lot of us, when we're manifesting or we're creating something out of nothing, we think that's what's going to bring us the joy. We think that's what's going to make us happy is that finished product. But in reality, what really happens is we get to that line and we're like, what's next? We did the thing. Cool. So how can we practice being content where we are right now? Gratitude. And I mean, deep gratitude. I like shunned the practice of gratitude for so long at the beginning because I was like, this is stupid. Like I write down three things that I'm grateful for and nothing happens. Like I don't feel different. And so I had to start practicing gratitude differently. This was like, I don't care if I'm waking up and doing three things. I don't even remember to do three things in the morning because like I have to get into my day to remember something. I was like, that wasn't working for me. So like, well, what if I take one thing I'm grateful for and I just write about it and like get deep into why I'm grateful about that? Will I feel differently? And that started like changing my entire like life because it changed my attitude and it changed the way I look at everything. Mm -hmm. I started giving more grace to everybody because I'm like practicing in gratitude and understanding like, who they are by paying more attention to them. 
like I practice gratitude for the things in my life and go deep. Like, okay, if I'm thankful for my coffee maker, why am I grateful for my coffee maker? Mm -hmm. What does coffee do for me? How is it easier to have a coffee maker versus like doing an old school cowboy way over a fire, like boiling my water and pouring it over the grounds? How, in how many ways does this one thing I'm grateful for actually make my life easier and better? And then I'll do it for like the people in my life, my kids, my husband, especially like when someone is irritating me, I practice gratitude for them. That has been a key to changing my relationships. Like, so my kids get gratitude practiced for them quite often. Like when they get high energy and they're just bouncing off the walls. And all I want to think is like, these kids are so crazy. Something needs to change. I realize it's me that needs to change. Let me step outside. Remember that they're children. They are only capable of so much calm in a day. Let me go fix my attitude. Mm -hmm. Let me think of all the reasons I love them. Let's think of everything that is good about them. How would my life be different if I didn't have them? Why is my life better being their mom? Mm -hmm. What have I learned from being their mom? And I just get deep into thinking of all the good and positive things. Mm -hmm. And then I feel the gratitude. And then my heart is just like going to explode. And I had this really neat thing happen was actually, I started practicing this stepping away when my kids were starting to irritate me and being grateful for them. And I was doing that for a few weeks. And then my youngest, this was like a year ago, he climbed up on the kitchen counter and threw the coffee carafe, the glass one on the ground, and it just shattered everywhere. And I remember walking into that room and seeing him and being like, I love you so much. I just grabbed him and held him. And I was like, I love you. And I'm like, I I set him down on the couch and then went to go clean it up. And then I had the thought, I was like, that was not in character for me because like me a month before that would have been yelling. Like, why are you even on the counter? You just broke my coffee crap. I don't have coffee tomorrow. Like now there's glass everywhere. And to me, I was just thinking like, I'm so glad you didn't get hurt Mm -hmm. because I love you so much. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized the the major power behind gratitude. Making it like a body, full body Uh gratitude, like from your head to your toes, when you're saying the why you are grateful, it is putting it into your body. So I'm an embodiment expert and embodiment Mm -hmm. coach. So I know the power that making your body feel the feeling of love, feel the feeling of joy and happiness. What it really does is because that's where the change begins. That's where change happens is when we can get it into our body and feel it to our core, to our heart and our soul, the change, that's how change happens. So the way that you found that practice of just not listing the three things that you're grateful for, but choosing that why and getting Mm -hmm. super deep, it's like peeling an onion of why it is that this is so grateful. And not only just that, but you're stepping away and then you're sending that love, not just to yourself, but to the person or the thing that is irritating you that is such a powerful mm-hmm. practice so thank you thank you for sharing that with us yeah and on your journey so I want to talk back about mint to bloom your podcast mm-hmm. I would love for you to like yeah talk more about that and because you were as before we started recording you were saying you had another podcast is that still out for people to listen to and then you have this podcast meant to bloom you're working with moms talking to moms about this journey right and so I'd mm-hmm. love for you to speak with us on yeah the philosophy all right. behind it, all things bloom. <laughs> to bloom. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> the podcast thing, I had a podcast called Meant to Bloom last year when I first started this. And I just felt like I didn't totally know what I was doing, but I was getting like my feet under me. Like I was learning how to do these things, how to talk about things, how to not just read my old blog posts. Cause I've been a blogger for five years and have made that shift into podcasting instead. Cause I mean, honestly, I listen more than I read at this point. So I'm betting that most of my followers would rather listen than read most of the time. So I made that shift into podcasting and I started the Mental Bloom podcast and I learned what I was doing. And then in June of this year, I was like, I have grown a lot since that podcast. And I feel like I need a fresh start because I stopped seeing what I'm doing as a hobby and started seeing it as a business Mm -hmm. and realizing I need to like reframe how I'm doing things. I just need to treat it differently. Mm -hmm. And so I started a whole new podcast called I Get To because I focus so much on mindset shifts. And that was like the first mindset shift that really started opening my eyes was that I get to, not I have to. I don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. It's my privilege and my blessing to get to do these things. And so that like changed the motherhood journey and it's just open open (laughs) doors. Yes. Yes. It made me, it forced me to start looking at everything differently. But then just this last week, as I was telling more people at like this networking event that I have a podcast, I was like, I don't like saying my podcast is called I get to that's kind of been like ruffling my feathers this whole time. 
I had a lot of positive feedback on the name, but I was like, this just sounds weird to me to say that. And I really miss telling people that it was called meant to bloom because I felt like that so encompassed what I talk about and the whole women's empowerment and just becoming who you're meant to be mm-hmm. and seeing life in cycles of blooming and going dormant to grow within and when you feel like you're buried under everything, realizing you're a seed and that, you know, all that crap you're buried under is just fertilizer. It's going to help you bloom bigger. So I shifted that name like this week. So technically there's two meant to bloom podcasts that exist in the world, but the other one, if you find it, it says like, follow the new meant to bloom, <laughs> go look for the other one. Cause I'm not nice adding episodes. Crumbs. There, so. Yeah. It's like a fresh crumb yeah. that leads to, yes. And it's so great to, that you are sharing even this expansion with us because I think mm-hmm. that's where the power lies. When you are able to do something dirty and messy and just get your hands in it and go for it and be uncomfortable and do it anyway, mm-hmm. that is how you grew into this butterfly who says, I now know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. I know what lights me up. I know what fires me up. And this is what I'm doing now. By doing that, you found your way not back but even bigger and better, right? Mm-hmm. And so that gives the journey, that gives us the, the imagery of that journey of, of basically, yeah, that caterpillar growing into a butterfly and you have to go through the journey. It's about the journey to becoming who you are meant to be. And so yes. that is why I wanted you to share that with us. So thank you so much. Who is your audience that you are talking to on the Mint to Bloom? Is it moms? Is it women? It's mainly moms. I do have a lot of like women in my audience who aren't moms yet. And they, they always come to me and they're like, I didn't think I was going to get anything from it because I'm not a mom, but actually it's all totally still relevant Mm -hmm. to me. I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, you might not share the experience of wiping butts every day, but it's the same concept. (laughs) It's the same concept. We're all human and we all have our own things that are equivalent to having that child, even birthing a business, like having that mindset shift. Like this is not just a hobby. This is a business. Mm -hmm. It's like giving birth to something new, basically creating something that wasn't there before. So yes, I get that 100%. Yeah. So I would love to talk more about you. So we've talked about the podcast, talked about mindsets, like tell us about you. You were saying you grew up in the Pacific Northwest and you're a boy of three mom, but who is Brittany beyond the places that she's living and (laughs) beyond the mommy and the wifey? (laughs) Yeah. That question always comes back to me. I, I feel this, like, I always tend to like lose myself in whatever I'm doing. Like I always struggled with like identity growing up. I remember thinking like back in high school, how like, oh, I want to have the same like bag, the tote bag that the cool girls have. And then I'd get that. And then I'd be like, I don't feel any different because it wasn't really like wanting the out external thing. It was wanting the internal change. And I didn't know who I was. So I was trying to be anyone else that I was a fan of. And then like, I started dancing and I would define myself as a dancer. And then I realized I was depressed. I defined myself as depressed. I was just a depressed mess for a long time. And I just felt like every time I went to somewhere, I would just like take on the role and never understood me. And so I always find it hard to like answer that question because it's like, well, I've been a lot of things Mm -hmm. and who am I outside of the things I do every day? Cause like, I don't lose myself in parenting anymore, like motherhood, but I do find myself starting to lose myself in my business. Like, Mm -hmm. Oh, what do I do? I run this business. Like I have this podcast. I'm helping other people be their best self and forget to remember that. Like, I'm just in this constant process of becoming my best self. Mm -hmm. I'm just growing. That's who I am as someone who grows. I have a lot of interests, very wide range of interests. And for a long time, I like, I don't know, I thought that I wasn't good at anything. So I couldn't really share about it. I have chickens and I have a garden, but I'm not like a homesteader. I can't give you homesteading advice. And I thought like that I couldn't just tell people that I have these things. It's like, oh, well, I mean, I'm trying to garden, but I'm not good at it. And (laughs) the way I talk about it is the way it's going to be. If I'm saying I'm depressed, if I'm saying I'm not good at gardening, that's what I'm going to be just sad with no plants. We need them. We need to right. they help us. Right. And so I just, I see myself as a lifelong learner. I have many interests. I do a lot of things and I'm constantly learning how to do them. And it doesn't matter if I'm good at it or bad at it, because that's just a perception. When are we going to define what good actually is and what bad actually is? Like I have a watermelon growing in my garden. A lot of my plants might not be doing well, but I'm learning what's wrong. And honestly, I didn't even plant the watermelon. So, I mean, that's a big <laughs> win. We had our chickens in the garden. And I wasn't gardening at the time. It was just like the only fence space to keep them away from the dogs. 
so we had chickens in there and I threw out watermelon last summer and I threw out pumpkins last fall for them to eat. And then I discovered this summer that I had like a huge watermelon patch or a big pumpkin patch. And I was really excited about my pumpkin patch. And I was like, I didn't plant these. That's really neat. And then I went and I like, was like, I need to tell people about this because Mm -hmm. most of what I get from my garden is metaphors. I don't get a big like vegetable (laughs) harvest, but I get a lot of metaphors from it. Mm -hmm. I was like, I didn't plant those pumpkins, but I didn't uproot them. I might not have cared for them, but they grew into a big pumpkin patch without me noticing. Mm -hmm. And our thoughts in our mind can do the same thing. Like you can have thoughts planted that you don't nurture, but they grow. And so like, you better hope that they're good good things that you're letting grow in there because I can spend all my time trying to grow corn. Corn's not growing, but those pumpkins are growing. (laughs) And I told everyone about the pumpkin patch that I didn't actually plant. And then once one of like the flowers bloomed, I realized that's not a pumpkin, that's a watermelon. So I have all these big pumpkin leaves, but vined through it is also watermelons and all the watermelons are growing. Even though I thought they were pumpkins, they were actually watermelons. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might be thinking thoughts that are one thing and they turn out to be something else. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you're believing a thought you have. And when you look at it closer, once it starts to get a bit bigger, you realize Mm -hmm. that's actually not what I thought it was. Maybe I thought this thought was safe to have and it turns out it's not safe. Mm -hmm. It's actually a very dangerous thought that's gonna lead me down this dark path. And if you're not paying attention to what's actually growing in your garden, it can get overrun by things you didn't mean to plant. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's such a beautiful story. It's beautiful and full deed of who you are. And thank you for sharing that with us. As you were speaking, I am literally getting a visual of your garden of the things that (laughs) are growing that you didn't plant and how they are just perfect for life for this conversation that we're Mm -hmm. having about how we are we are the tenders to what is being created in our life. And how we do that is by our thoughts and also our emotions, which you just taught us with gratitude, getting that emotion in your body helps you with your thinking. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that was just such a beautiful illustration, all of that. And when you were speaking to, I also had this thought in my head that we manifest, we create this way. And so I, three weeks ago, I went to a Kathy Heller retreat, which is our mentor, which is how mm-hmm. we connected uh-huh. and went to a retreat with Kathy Heller. And I was manifesting. I'm like, I'm going to manifest me and my husband under the same roof. So I wrote, I want me and my husband under the same roof, period. And so then that's what I started focusing on. That was the thought. That was the belief. Okay. It's three weeks later. My husband and I are on the phone because he works out of the home. Mm-hmm. He works in another state. And he says, do you and ever want to move to North Dakota? And I'm like, that's not a full body. Yes. But that's exactly what I wrote. I wrote, I want us under the same roof. And so it's so true that we have to be so careful what we wish for, because we definitely are the creators of our reality. So we have to write it out and make it clear and make it exactly what you want. Don't leave any Mm -hmm. detail out. Don't think anything is too big to have. And so now I've revised it. I went and I wrote it. I wrote it out and I dream bigger than that because I now see how powerful and how quickly we can do these changes in our lives by making these new changes of our beliefs and thoughts. Like it's that powerful, like mind blowing that it's that quick and it's that powerful when you have that intention of this is what I want, this is what I'm gonna create and this is the thought I wanna have. And so thank you so much for sharing all those brilliant, brilliant metaphors and brilliant strategies for us to better tend to our garden, which is us, which is us. So now as we move towards the end of the podcast, I would love for you to tell us where our listeners can connect with you, can work with you, can jump into your world. Yes. The Meant to Bloom podcast is where I share the bulk of everything I feel that needs to be said. Also, I'm on Instagram at Britt Clarkson and I share things as often as I feel led to. Mm. A lot of times I'll just do reminders that the podcast is up or I do reels that let you know what's going on. I'm at brittanyclarkson.com. That's where I house everything I have. Do you want a freebie to add? Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I have the happy mom mindset makeover and that's just going to get you questioning the thoughts you're thinking. And it's like, even if you're not a mom, it's not super mom specific. I just know most of people listening to me want to be a happy mom because that feels like an oxymoron. <laughs> a lot of times when you're stuck in like the overwhelm, just feeling like you're drowning to be a happy mom feels almost impossible, but 
it is like, you can go from hot mess to happy mom. It's all up to you. And then I also like right now I'm launching a course for the first time ever that I thought was going to have to be two separate ones. One about like mindset and one about like home management. Cause like I've grown up in this home my whole life and it's like a fixer upper basically. Like there's so many like endless projects that need to be completed. And I was like, well, gosh, I guess as I'm fixing up my house so that I can like it, I'll create a course at the same time to teach other people how to change their home to like it too. And then I realized when I started like coming up with the happy mom method course that I'm working on right now, I was like, Oh, light bulb. I don't have to change my home to love it. I need to love my home before it will change for me. Nothing's going to change if I'm not content where I am. I don't need to wait until then to be happy about it. I can be happy now. I can practice gratitude for my home now. I can make simple shifts in my methods and in my, you know, in my daily practices. It goes, it ties like hand in hand. They're two of the same thing. Uh huh. So thank you for sharing that with us. And of course, we'll put all that in the show notes. And thank you for the freebie because that's going to get yes. everybody thinking and finding more about themselves, which is the best thing that we can do is find out who we are. It's been a pleasure having you on the Make Life Fun Show. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for being part of the self-love movement. Your support and care matters here. Please be sure to subscribe, review, and share. And get your ultimate daily planner freebie today by visiting makelifefunpodcast.com. When you're ready to step deeper into my vibration and work together, go to backrosecoaching.com. Thank you again for listening. See you next time.